We want to take uh, some time to talk about honour. We hear quite a bit about that word honour in our world today. Uh, often Anzac Day is a day where we talk about honouring the service of our soldiers. Or sometimes we hear, let's stand and honour so-and-so. And the scriptures also refer to this biblical principle of honour. In Proverbs chapter 21, verse 21, we read, Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life and righteousness and honour. Jesus talked a bit about honour too. He said, He who receives the prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. What that's saying is as we honour those people, we will be honoured and rewarded in the same way. See, biblically, when we honour, we accurately acknowledge who people are in God to us and we graciously receive the gift of who they are in our lives. You know, when I think about the ministry of Neil Prolix and the ministry he's had not just over the, over the last two decades here at Hume Ridge, but beyond that, I'm taken to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. I've been thinking a lot over the last few days and weeks about Neil's time and the stories I've heard well before Kaz and I got here about his ministry. And this passage really, I guess, reminds me and, and, and helps me to understand what it means to truly do ministry well. So let me read it to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body, make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize." You know, Neil Prolix is someone who's been an incredible role model to so many. So Neil's going to join us now, and we're going to just spend some time just chatting about his life in ministry over the last two decades. Thanks, Neil. I know many of you at home are cheering and clapping, and, you know, if, you were, if we were in the auditorium right now, I know you'd probably be standing and giving Neil a standing ovation. So do that from home. Everybody stand up, clap. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Neil, it's been really good, really fun for me actually over the last few weeks just to go back over and ask some people a few details. We're going to unpack your life in ministry a little bit more when we all gather together, when we can gather together, and we'll do a bit of a This Is Your Life with you and Kerry, and, um, and we'll be able to honour both of you in that time. But if, I'm right in saying you started your ministry here um, in January 2000? That's correct, yep. January 2000. January seven, uh, 17. And in that time, you know, Neil's had significant roles of ministry and with preaching and teaching, conducting lots of weddings, lots of funerals, pastorally caring for so many people still at the church, some people who've moved on from now. Um, and then even in the early days, you were involved with small groups, I think, coordinating oh, small right. groups yep. and, and getting our small groups up and running, which is great. Uh, you've done sermon series and even done written studies, published actual life group studies and, and small right. group yep. studies. Yep. Um, and obviously a real passion for the lost with overseeing CE. And in more recent years, some great ministry with our migrants and refugees. And I know we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. As I mentioned to you, we're going to do, have a major event where we're going to celebrate um, Neil and Kerry and we're going to have dinner together and, and or lunch. We'll let you know when we can do that, when we can gather together. But later on today... Um, almost immediately after this service, we're going to be having a drive-by. Hopefully you know about that already and you're going to be part of celebrating Neil and Kerry, which will be really good. Kerry, uh, but Neil, I want to ask you a few questions. Sure. The first one's one that lots of people ask me over the last couple of days and it's really important to them. Yep. They're saying, now, I know Neil's retiring, but they're not moving away from Hume Ridge, are they? Mm. So do you want to let, let sure, everyone know what's sure, happening sure. there? Sure. Uh, Murray, we are going to have a break from the church. Mm. I think that's important. I think it's important for the church, but also for me and Kerry. Yeah. Uh, we're not moving away from Toowoomba, but when we come back, it will be a different focus. Yeah. Uh, it, to be fair to the team 
and to the congregation, there'll be a, a specific focus, a concentrated focus that I would like to be involved in. Fantastic. Yeah. No, that's good. Well, that's reassuring for everybody to know that, that you're still going to be around, which is, which is great. But understandably that you need to take a bit of a break too and no doubt you want to um, take a breath and get, get away and have sure. a bit of a, a look around as well, which is good. So... Now, this is a pr pretty fam familiar space and place for you, particularly up here on stage with the pulpit just over there and, and surroundings. And there's obviously a, the whole of Hume Ridge holds lots of memories for you. Mm -hmm. After 20 and 20 and a half years of pastoral ministry here, but your life story goes and your life in ministry goes even back beyond Hume Ridge. So tell us a little bit about that time, the 20 years maybe prior to even arriving at Hume Ridge to, to minister. Sure, sure, Murray. Yeah, well, my, my history with the church goes right back to uh, when I was a baby. Uh, and, and our family's history goes right back, I think, 90 years. Yeah. Uh, my mum was converted when she was 13 years of age in a mission that was uh, conducted by E.C. Henriksen. Mm. And so when I was born, I guess one of the first things that happened to me, I was brought along to church. Yeah. And that was down at Margaret Street. Uh, and then... Following that, of course, just the general growing up in the church, Sunday school, youth work, all that sort of thing. So you grew up at Hume Ridge? Absolutely. Or, well, Margaret Street in those and, days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then when I was uh, 19, moved away, did some training, mm -hmm. and then came back 29 years later. Unbelievable. So. That's great. So you've obviously got some memories of, of being ministered to as a child and then moving away and then coming some back. Some really great memories, uh, Murray. Oh, and, and, of course, particularly the people. Yeah. Uh, my memories go back to Margaret Street days and uh, just some of the great old people, the saints of uh, the church through that, that period mm. of time. And the, the influence that older people can have on a young person, uh, I don't think you realise it until later in life, just, that, just the impact, the influence yeah. that people have yeah. uh, towards young people. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. So obviously there's been a vast amount of ministry in, in, in all the different areas that, and places that you've served and ministered. And four churches, am I right in four, saying that? Four churches, yeah. Four churches. So yep. what are those, who are those four churches? Uh, the first church we, uh, we were involved with was in Newcastle. And interestingly enough, let me just go back. Yep. Uh, when I was in college, we were assigned four churches. So each year you were assigned to a church. So mm. my first church was on the north side of Sydney, on the, 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 shore, the northern shore, yep. uh, Narrowena. And then uh, my second year was in Newcastle, which actually became my first church. Wow. Uh, my third year, we were in uh, Hurstville, right. and that's where I met Kerry. Oh, wow. Yeah, so good memories of uh, yeah. Hurstville. And then in our final year in college, we were at Burwood Church of Christ. And then following that, we had a call from, uh, from Georgetown in Newcastle to, to join them, and we were there for four years. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Very good. So you've you had sort of a vast experience moving moving forward in different areas. And then there was a time where you kind of stepped out of, and maybe I'm running ahead here, but you stepped out of ministry and, and pursued another career for a little while? Well, that's right. From Newcastle, we went to Adelaide. We were in Adelaide for 12 months. And then beyond Adelaide, we came back to Brisbane, to the north side of Brisbane, to Pine, the Pine Shire. Pine Shire. And we had, I think, six years there in the Pine Shire. And uh, I went through a period of time where I, I really just wore out. Mm. Um, they talk about brownouts with electricity. I think I went through a brownout. Wow. And uh, it really had a, uh, quite a strong, bad effect upon me. Mm. And uh, so I just, I just knew I had to step away. Mm. And so for three years, I, I trained and then worked as an ambulance officer in Brisbane. Very good. And at the end of those three years, uh, then the church, the leadership of the church uh, said to me, look, we'd love you to come back. So we came back for another 10 years. Wow. And that's really rare that, that you'd be at a church, you leave, and then they call you back. Like, that's, yeah. that's unusual for a church. So it says something about the impact that you had in the ministry that you had. Yeah, I guess so. I think also it says something about the church. Just, uh, you know, each church we went to, uh, each one was different, mm. but the people, just yeah. the people of the church, um, and, and they all, each, each church, each group of people have a, uh, an influence on your life. Yeah. And I guess there was connections made and... And the leadership of, uh, of uh, Pine River saw something yeah. and realised that there was still a role for me to play down at, uh, at Pine River. So yeah, we were there for another 10 years. So am I right in saying 48 years of, of sort of full-time ministry? In the well, f 48 years, bar, bar three. Bar three. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we were doing ministry at that stage of course, too. Yeah. Because I can remember doing things like discipleship yeah. and, and those sorts of things yeah. during those three years. Wow. Yeah. Well, we have another thing in common then with the emergency services yeah, as part of what we do. Yeah. 
been, been quite a few lunch times where we've sat around the table at lunch here at the church and Neil and I have started sharing stories of uh, car accidents and everybody else gets up and walks away because we started to talk about the blood and guts and we, we ride into it thinking it's fantastic, but some people have got different stomachs for that sort of thing. So you came here in January 2000 That's and right. you came into a role of kind of pastoral care and, and small groups. That's right. In yeah. those stages. And there's been some changes, obviously, in your ministry and in your focus and in your involvement and in your passion mm, over, yeah. the, over that 20 years. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. So you're right, I uh, came into a role of pastoral care and small groups. There was a good small group ministry here, mm. happening here when we arrived. Mm. But uh, we picked that up and it, it grew uh, during that period of time that we were involved. I think around 2005, uh, the time of the construction of, of the auditorium, uh, Things were happening yeah. and I, I sensed that even within the leadership of the church, there wasn't a concentrated focus on reaching out on evangelism. And I've always had a heart for mm. evangelism. Uh, I, I wouldn't call myself an evangelist, yeah. but I've, I've, I've got a heart. I want to do evangelism. Yeah. And I, 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 I can think of nothing better than sitting down with some people who are searching and just sharing with them. And I, I wanted to do that and, and make that more of a focus. Mm. So that's where it started in a new role, which was more into outreach. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. And so tell us a little bit about how that's developed and some of the things that have, that have happened over the years with you being involved in that area and with that passion and focus. Right. Well, uh, initially, the focus was uh, specifically to uh, an Australian, white Australian mm. uh, community. And we've always, well, since I came, we've been using the, the tool Christianity yeah. Explained, which is so very effective. Mm. It, uh, it takes people through uh, six weeks of considering who Jesus is, what he did, and our response to him. And I think a lot of Australians need time to process uh, the gospel. Uh, we're not what I would call in any way a Christian community or society. Mm. Uh, the Christian faith is quite foreign to a lot of uh, Australians. And so therefore, uh, I, I like the idea of six weeks. Yeah. And we saw some marvellous things happening. We've seen people come through and, and, and receive Jesus into their lives. Mm. And that's been great. Mm. And then about, uh, I guess, would have been maybe 2010, we started to see in Toowoomba uh, refugees coming into the city. Mm. And a couple of uh, South Sudanese families started to attend church. Mm. Um, in fact, one of those families still has some involvement mm. in the church. And I can remember the Sunday morning when the two men of those, of those families came to me and they said, Neil, will you help us with our English? And I sort of didn't think of myself of, as being involved. Yeah. And so I went and spoke to one of our retired school teachers and said, look, would you give some time to these, these fellows because they want to improve their English? Mm. And, and that's what happened. That's, that, that's really what started to happen. But at the same time, I became more aware of the refugee migrant uh, community in Toowoomba. Yep. And so I started to visit particularly these two families. Mm. And I, I guess, you know, something happens to you. Yeah. It just yep. happens in here. Yep. Uh, I didn't have any burden or any passion in that area, but God does things in your lives when you, when you step out. Mm. When you step out into new areas, uh, I think he gives you a passion. Mm. And so beyond that, Kerry and I travelled over in Europe in 2011 for 13 weeks. And in Europe at that time, there were lots and lots of refugees. Mm. And I can remember saying to, to Kerry while we were overseas, Wow, look at all these refugees. And so many of them seem so aimless, yeah. just hanging together in groups, no purpose. And, and I could actually see major social problems occurring. Mm. And I said to her, you know, when we get back, it's something we need to really start to consider and think through mm. because the, uh, the, the refugee migrant uh, community is growing in Toowoomba and, and surely as a church, that's something we need to look at. So we came back. Uh, I'm not sure exactly at what stage. I do remember that in 2011, one of those two men who initially came here died, mm -hmm. only a young man. Mm -hmm. And I was invited to take part in his funeral service. And so I had a, 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 a significant exposure to the South Sudanese community in Toowoomba, spent lots of time with them. Mm -hmm. 
And then I began to talk to the elders as we prayed about it and just sensed, yeah, God's, God's doing something here. Um, I spoke to the elders of our church and myself and two of our elders went to Brisbane uh, to a, a church that uh, was running a ministry in this area. And in fact, this, this church also did a training program to prepare yep. people to teach English. So uh, the three of us went down one one weekday afternoon and spent the whole afternoon in Brisbane and we, we got first-hand exposure wow. to what was going on and I didn't have to do any more convincing. Those two elders, when they came back, they were sold. Yeah. So that's the way to go. Wow. <laughs> yep. That's so good. That's so good. And, and the heritage now, if we look at our, our ministry to, to refugees and migrants now, and the, the foundation that you've laid and the heritage you've set moving forward, I mean, it's one of the jewels of the crown of this church is the way mm. that we support the needs of those who are new to our community. And so that's one of the many things that we, um, you know, we stand in thanks for what you've done in sort of laying that foundation, yeah. which is good. So 20 years here at Hume Ridge, yep. what are some of the special memories? What are some of the special moments, um, you know, maybe some fun moments or just special memories that you have? Lots of them, obviously, and I know that's going to be hard to cut them down. But sure. Share sure. a couple with us. Uh, I guess for me, uh, Christmas time at Hume Ridge and mm. Easter time have always been special times. Mm. Uh, I love Christmas here. Yeah. I love the Christmas Eve service. Uh, there's something so special about it. Mm. Um, the guys here do a, a wonderful preparation and presentation on, on those Christmas Eve services. Mm. And uh, interestingly, I've met lots of people who just came as, I guess they were coming as a once-off, but they came on those nights and, and was able to make connections with those people. Mm. And, and that, that's been really good. Yeah. And then Easter too has always been special. Uh, so, you know, some of the big events like that have re been really good. Um, special events or special memories. Um, I've, I've always made good connections with older people. Mm. And when I first came 20 years ago, I, I wanted to start a prayer time. And so we began a prayer time on Wednesday mornings. And the people that rolled out were some of the older guys in the church. Mm. And they were like fathers. Yeah. And so I, I have great memories of times with them, not just in prayer, but in their homes. Mm. And just listening to them talk and share, that, that, that's been very special. Mm. I, I think a special memory or a special experience has been working together in team mm. with co-workers, co-pastors. Mm. Uh, I've done solo ministry. Mm. I did that for what? I guess the first uh, 20 years of my life. Yep. And that can be a pretty, that can be a pretty tough uh, yeah. uh, act to go through. Mm. Uh, so coming here and being part of a team was, was great. Mm. Um, there, was, there was lots of freedom. Mm. Uh, no one sort of micromanaged me. Mm. And yet I knew I had the support. Great. And I think it was a learning time. Yeah. Um, the informal times have been great, yeah. just with other team members, stopping in the hallway of the offices and just having a chat. Yeah. I, I really valued those times. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not set up. It, it just happens. Yeah. Or just, you know, walking past, someone's in their office and walking in and sitting down. And I guess you're interrupting them, you're stopping them for work. But, but a, a conversation yeah, develops. The best times, aren't they? Yeah. And, you know, and then you can actually sometimes go into some really significant... Uh, uh, conversation. Mm. So that, that's been special. That's great. Um, I guess when I think of special times, I also realise mm. that some of the special times are not the happy times, but are some of the sadder times. Yep. Yep. Special in the sense that I think God grows you through mm. those times. Mm. Um, I, I, one, of the, one of the times that um, mm. stays in my mind is when I've seen people who I thought come to faith, mm. but then walk away. Yeah. And I guess they've been a heavy, they've mm. been heavier moments. Mm. And you invest in people and then gradually they just walk away. And God still is doing something in my life or in other people's lives in those times. Mm. Uh, I, I guess one of the, the tougher times for me has been when I've done weddings and maybe sometimes late I've seen that marriage yeah. fail. 
they, they, that, that impacts you. Mm. Um, I haven't done a lot of weddings here, Murray. Mm. Uh, I think Ross is the man that's yeah. done most of the weddings in our church yeah. because he has that connection with the youth. Although yeah. I have done some, some weddings, but I've done a lot of funerals. Yeah. And that, that's been very special. Yeah. To yep. be invited into a family uh, when they're going through a time of grief. Yeah. And for me, uh, there's been real connections with those people during those times. Mm. So, yeah, there have been special times. Oh, that's good. There's, there's been some fun times. Yeah. Um, I, I guess, uh, and not just here at Hume Ridge, but I, I, my mind goes back to Newcastle to a, a baptismal service. There was a baptism. There were four young teenage women who were baptised mm. on one Sunday night. And I don't think I ever really saw joy until that night. Yeah. And after the baptism, after I'd finally got out of the water, I went into the back room and here are these four girls with their arms around each other and they were just jumping mm. up and down and, and that, there was just a joy there yeah. to see that. Mm. Um, and, and, and it was fun. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't super spiritual, but there was joy there. Yeah. Yeah. Something special had happened in their oh, life that beautiful. night. Um, there's been some funny times. Mm. Uh, I was uh, in Newcastle again and I had a phone call from a church in Tamworth to say that there were two people coming from Tamworth to Newcastle. They'd been uh, involved in, in drug addict, they were drug, druggies, they were yep. doing drugs, but they wanted to, uh, to dry out. They were going to uh, go to, the, to the, the hospital in Newcastle and they'd take them through a program. So it was... Uh, I think it was a Friday, they, they came to, to the manse, drove in, and then I drove them into the hospital. And just as we got to the hospital, the guy turns around to me and he says, look, and I can't remember the exact figure, figure but it was over $1,000 in cash. And he says, oh, here, look after this for us, will you? <laughs> so, and then they're out of the car and they're gone. So I've got $1,000 in my, in my hand. Yep. It's Friday afternoon. Yep. I can't put it in, you know, what do I do with it? So I went home and that Sunday night, again, we had some baptisms. And one of the elders was doing an introduction to baptism. And I was in, in a room behind the baptistry uh, with the person being baptised. And next minute, this guy that we'd taken into the hospital breaks in, comes bursting in and says, I want the money, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said to him, I said, mate, I'm going to do something very special in a few minutes. I, I, I haven't got, look, can, can, you, can you wait? No, I've, I'm, I'm out of here. We've got to go. <laughs> so I had to rush down the stairs of the church. The manse was next door to the church. Yeah. Rush in, get the money. <laughs> um, they put their bags behind their car, gave him the money. He was in such a hurry to get out of there. He drove over their luggage. <laughs> And then I raced back up into the church and fortunately the elder was still speaking. So, uh, you know, funny things happen in churches. You can make movies about that sort of oh, stuff. Yeah. Unbelievable. I guess one of, one of the other lighter moments, although it wasn't so light, was mm. here at Hume Ridge. Yeah. I, I did a funeral service here for someone outside of the church, but they wanted a big, uh, a big space, an auditorium. Mm. And I was asked if I would do the service. They're probably would have been, say, 500 people here that mm. day. And just before the service, I like to get to a service early. I put my Bible down somewhere. And then maybe five, ten minutes later, I went to where I thought I'd put it and it wasn't there. Oh, no. And I looked, I asked questions, I searched, and the time's getting closer and closer to starting time. That's a nightmare. Oh, <laughs> Anyway, I just sort of sat in the front seat there and bowed my head and said, what do I do, Lord? Mm. Anyway, I did the whole service without any notes. I, I had to actually go and get another Bible. And at the moment, it wasn't funny. Uh, it okay. was stressful. <laughs> but I'd taken the time before, beforehand mm. to really work through the notes. Preparation. I knew, yeah, preparation. And, um, so you we did got the whole that. funeral service without notes? Without notes, yeah. And now I look back, you know, <laughs> 
that that's it's 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 light. It's yeah. funny. It's yeah. a funny thing, that's but uh, it wasn't at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, I good. guess I guess Murray, and I, 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 I I'd like to say something about this a little later on. Mm. I, I guess one of the special things for me um, throughout all the years as is been has been having my family involved in mm. ministry with me. Yeah. Um, Carey particularly, mm. um, but even the kids, mm. even the kids. And, and when I say kids, my kids, are, my youngest is 38 years yeah. of age. Yeah. But they have been, just to have that family there has been so special. Mm. Uh, I haven't always been the, the husband or the father I should have been. Sure. And uh, if, you know, God does forgive us, yeah. but I still have regrets. Yeah. And I just wished at times I'd given more time there. Mm. But just family, family in ministry is yeah. very special. Yeah. Um, to go home after a, a big Sunday or, mm. you know, after a, a fairly heavy day and just yep. to have someone at home you can talk to, that yep. makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. So much gold there, Neil. So much gold just yeah. to hear about some of, the, some of the life reflections. On that same sort of... Wavelength. I mean, we're doing a lot of work with young leaders in the life sure. of the church at the moment. And I guess as you come to the, the end of this sort of ministry experience or this ministry season of your life, yeah. if you were talking to some of our young leaders now, what, what encouragements, what pearls of wisdom would you bring to our young leaders who may be just starting out in leadership and really have a heart and a passion to serve, maybe to become pastors? Sure, sure. What would you share? Uh, that's a good question, Murray. And in fact... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I uh, went for a walk yep. with one of our young leaders and he plied me with questions. Mm. I think we walked for about an hour yeah. and we just question and response. And, and I guess, you know, I can only share what I've learned along the way. Um, when I went into college, mm. I thought I knew an awful lot. Mm. After four years and going into a church at the age of 23 by myself to lead a church, I realised how little I knew. Yeah. And so uh, I would say uh, be aware of those around you as a young leader who have got experience. Mm. Uh, but look, let me just, I, I did jot down a few mm. things here mm. and I, I, I trust that these, uh, these thoughts might be helpful. I, I would say to any young leader, any leader... Uh, your priority in leadership is your relationship with Jesus. Mm. It may surprise people, but making time to spend that time with Jesus every day mm. is not easier because you're in ministry. Because all sorts of other things can easily crowd that out of, of a pastor's life. Right. Um, and it's only as I've gotten on further and further into the ministry have I realised that. Um, I would say uh, your relationship with Jesus, building into that, mm. is more important than anything else as a leader. Um, where, before I went into college, uh, I wanted to be a great preacher. Mm. Uh, years into the church, I wanted to build a big church. Mm. I think I can say it honestly now. The priority in my life is I just want to know Jesus. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, and I guess when you know him, then you can truly make him know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, even Paul, and he writes this in Philippians, and, and Paul sort of trotted out his credentials in chapter yeah. 3. Uh, he was a Jew of all the Jews, you know. He was born... Uh, into the tribe of Benjamin. He was uh, a Pharisee. You know, he, he trots out his mm. credentials and he says, well, all of those things are like rubbish. Yeah. He said, they're not to be compared mm. with the righteousness I get from Christ. Mm. And then in, in the, the 10th verse, he says this, and this always staggers me, that Paul would say this, that I may know him. He doesn't yeah. say, I do know no. him. He says, that I might know him. And I guess... Um, I would just say to any young leader, go, go after a relationship with Jesus. Great. Go after it. That's great. Um, I'd also say to young leaders, uh, even before you take up a formal role, look over your shoulder and see if there's anyone following you. Mm. Hmm. Um, or look and see if there's anyone walking with you. Mm. I think... Uh, if, if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to actually go into pastoral work, uh, 
you ought to be leading right from the, uh, the outset. That's good. Right from the yeah, outset. That's really good. Um, I would say to young leaders uh, that on your way, go out of your way to build relationships with people, yeah. those that you're going to lead. Uh, be among people, go into their homes, be a listener mm. to them, be a listener to them. Um, and I, I would even go to the point of saying, hold back from advising uh, people in your leadership as a young person, hold back, but set the direction by your example. Oh, great. Uh, I've only got two more, Murray, yeah, no, and, right. and, and look, there could have been many, many more. I'm sure there's going to be some young people and some older people taking notes right now, Neil, because this is, this is fantastic. This I, is I would say to people, don't make decisions <laughs> under pressure. Yep. Don't make the decisions under pressure. Uh, and, and all sorts of things can create pressure on you to make decisions. I actually think urgency is an enemy. Mm. Um, I know I've made some of my worst decisions yeah. under pressure. Mm. And when you're young, you can be very easily intimidated. So don't, you know, <laughs> I'm reading through the scriptures at the moment and, and just the other day I came across and said, don't fear, don't fear men, they're, they're flesh, mm. uh, fear God. That's good. So don't, don't be intimidated. Don't force your decisions on others. Mm. And by that I mean, I've learned, if I ask someone to consider doing something, I, I, I almost invariably say, I don't make a decision today. Mm. I want you to go away yeah. and think about it. I want, I want it, to, it to be a decision that you've thought through. Yeah. You realise there might be a cost involved here. Yeah. And so you need to weigh up the cost That's factor. That's great, that prayerful consideration. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and then I, I guess the last thing I'd like to just say is spend a lot of time with godly people mm. who are consistently who are consistent in their walk and you've known they've been in the midst of the battle. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like reading. I'm a reader. I like reading the authors who I, I know have done the hard yards. I, I, I consider in Christian literature that today there are writers who write because there's money in it. Yeah. That's true. But I, I, you know, some of my favourite authors are people like Ravi Zacharias. Mm. And when I realise where that guy's been, mm. what he's done, uh, what he's encountered, mm. oh, my head comes up and I listen when he speaks. Mm. Uh, so That's I would great. say look for godly people, other leaders who have shown a consistency over a period of time mm. and spend a lot of time with them. That's great. Um, the other, only other uh, thing I'd say is ask good questions, mm -hmm. uh, be teachable, uh, be true to who you are, and um, well, maybe that that'll do. I I could no, go that's, on. That's, that's, I could that's go excellent. on. That's really good. That's that's gold for those who are thinking about ministry or even involved in ministry right now. I think that's that's fantastic. Maurice, one, one other thing I I, I would say mm. with Liz. One of the questions I, in the latter years of my ministry I've done is I've asked myself the question, where would Jesus be today? Mm. There's a scripture in John. I had to jot it down. It's John 12, 26. Mm. And, and Jesus said, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, mm. there will my servant be. Mm. And so I don't do it every day. But I regularly say, Lord, where are you going to be today? Yeah. Because that's that's where I want to be. Great. And great. And if you are, if if you if you pray that, then mm. be be aware that mm. he may take you into places where you're not always comfortable, mm. and you may not have the experiences in life. You may think I'm, I'm going to drown here, but if you go where he is, yes. he'll see you through. It's it's almost like you're saying I'm going to set aside my agenda for today, and I'll, I want your agenda. Yeah. I want to go after the things that you're yeah. about. No, yeah. That's that's really good. And, and, that, and that and that doesn't mean that you don't plan your day, no, no, no. No. because I think God works out of our plans. Yeah. yeah, but open to Him. Yeah. Last question. Sure. Sure. Thank you. This has just been fantastic, Neil. I re really appreciate it. As we've said, you know, later on in the year we're going to get together and we're going to uh, celebrate even more fully, mm. uh, both you and Kerry. Um, but your retirement starts, I think it's Tuesday the 30th, is kind of the last That's day. Right. We're going to yep. have a bit of a morning tea with the, sure. with the staff. Sure. 
So as, as we move forward, um, as Hume Ridge moves forward into the next season, what's on your heart to share with us as a church moving, as we move forward? Sure, sure. Is there anything there you'd like yeah, to speak yeah. into? Yeah, I, I would, uh, Murray. Uh, some weeks ago, you did ring me and that you asked me if I'd preach the, today. Yes. And initially I said yes. Yeah. And you asked me to speak on what if it's true, God is faithful. Yeah. And, and, and I, of course, I got back to you and I said, look, Murray, uh, I prefer not to, as you're aware, and maybe some of the folk in the church are aware, I've been struggling a bit mm. with, with health. Yeah. Um, I don't believe anything to worry about. Um, I think uh, it's all in hand, but yeah. I'm still struggling a bit with that. And so keep praying for Neil, please. So, for yeah. So, uh, but I, I guess if, what I'd like to just share with, uh, with the folk today is uh, just the faithfulness of God, mm. how faithful God has been to me mm. and to, to my family mm. uh, throughout all the years. Mm. Um, When you, when you rang me and asked me, I actually did start to think about it. So oh. I've got a few thoughts here that sure. could have been part of the sermon. <laughs> so I don't know how Preachers long... will always find a way of preaching. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, I don't know how long we've got. <laughs> but I, I've, as I say, I've been, I've been doing a Bible reading program that takes me through the scriptures. And one of the things that's come through to me mm. is how often the word of God talks about God's faithfulness. I mean, it mm. talks about all yeah. sorts of other characteristics, characteristics of God, but yeah. his faithfulness. And I thought about the first thing I think is so important is that God is faithful to himself. Mm. Mm. Now, that might sound a little bit egotistical or he's, you know, God's sort of, you know, there's something going on there. But I don't think it's true. I think it's actually good. So that when God says he is loving, he's faithful to that. Mm. He's kind. He is faithful to that. He, to me, God is the one consistent, enduring reality in the whole universe. Mm. He doesn't deviate. He doesn't, uh, there's no variance in God. He doesn't change. In fact, the scriptures are quite clear. Uh, we, one of the great hymns of the church is, Great is thy faithfulness. Mm. And as far as I can see it, it's based on two scriptures. One is uh, James 1.17 where James writes, every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of light, in whom there is no vari variation or shifting shadow. Mm. And the other one's Lamentations 3, 22, 23, which says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Mm. And so whatever, whatever there we, we see in God... He's true to that. And, and so that means he's dependable. Mm. He is so dependable. Uh, God has been faithful to me in the people he's put around me. Mm. Firstly, in a, in a home, in a family, my parents, my siblings. Um, I learned so much. I'm only realising it now. Mm. I learned so much from my parents. Wow. Um, my dad was converted later in life. Uh, but my mum as a 13-year-old and then brought up in the church and uh, my mum was a hard worker. Mm. She worked, I learned I the work ethic from, from both of them, but from my mum particularly. Mm. Um, it, was, it was my mum that uh, I think was very instrumental. She wouldn't know this, but mm. instrumental in my conversion. Mm. I think I was about 11 years of age and there was a, um, a crusade, an evangelistic crusade in Toowoomba. A big marquee was set up beside the town hall in Ruthven Street mm. and a bloke named David Manslaver, I think three weeks every night preached there and mum would take us kids along to the, to the uh, services. And it was there one night that I knew that God was speaking to me. Mm. You know, it was, it was that first time. Mm. Yep. And then as the years went by, God continued to speak to me. And it got to the point where I started not wanting to go to church because I, I was aware that whenever the gospel was preached, the Spirit of God would convict me. Wow. You need to get yourself right with, 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 with me, with wow. God. And so I resisted going to church to the point, um, 
I can remember hiding so mum would not get behind me and get me to church. <laughs> and I'd come to church and, and uh, you know, whoever's speaking, speaking, and it'd come to the end of the service and there'd be a response. And yeah. I, I hated it. Wow. Because the Spirit of God just weighed so heavy on me. Mm. I, I, would, I would have times of sleeplessness wow. because I was aware of the need to make it right. So mm. mum... I'm just so grateful to, mm. to my mum for mm. um, to, to doing that. And mm. then for dad, dad was a great reader. And I can remember even as a, I don't know, 11, 12 year old, lying down on a couch beside him and he's reading a Christian book and, and we just start talking about mm. it. And that had a big influence on me. So the family that he yeah. put around me Beautiful. has been so, so, uh, so important. Uh, God's been faithful in the material provision. Mm. Yep. We, we've never been wealthy as a family, you know, probably we're on the poorer side of things, but mm. boy, never went without ever, yeah. ever. And I think probably to parents who did go without, mm. um, but we never went without. Um, God's been faithful through his word, mm. just faithful through his word. When he speaks, when he says something, he's true to it. It doesn't always happen. He doesn't always... Um, uh, fulfill what he promises right there and then when you want it, mm. but he will fulfill it. Mm. And I found that so, so, Beautiful. so important. Beautiful. Uh, there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 1, 17, where Paul uh, is writing to the Corinthians and he says to them, he says, you think I'm vacillating? You think mm. I've changed my plans? And he says, you think I'm a person who says, yes, yes. And then later on, I no, no. Mm. He said, but that's not what I'm about. He mm. said, that's, that's fleshly. He yeah. said, and when he goes on, he talks about Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, the promises of God are yes. Yes, yes and amen. And amen. Mm. Mm. And that's true. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Um, so God has been faithful to this church, mm. our church, yeah. uh, because of his word to us. Yeah. And then I guess God's been faithful I've seen his faithfulness because it's been enlarged and it was accelerated towards me mm. in Jesus. Mm. Uh, because uh, for me, uh, uh, the faithfulness of God is in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm. I, I love the words of Paul in Romans 8 where he talks about what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Mm. And then he goes on, he says, he who did not spare his own son, mm. but delivered him up for us all, how will he not with him freely give us all things? Mm. And, and that just speaks so much, such volumes yeah. of faithfulness. Yeah. I guess, uh, lastly, if I was to say something about God's faithfulness, it would be this. God has been faithful to me, incredibly faithful, faithful to me in convicting me. Mm. I'm like every other human yeah. being. I blow it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I blow it more often, often than others, but I, my, my password for my computer is the word repent. Mm. Now, if you think you're going to break into my <laughs> computer and type in repent, you won't get into it because I put it in another language. <laughs> uh, but, but God... God has, I, I ask God to keep my heart soft, mm. to tenderize it. And so I don't have to go too far into the day when I've done something wrong and I, sure. the spirit of God challenges me. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for that, mm. that uh, convicting mm. work of the spirit. Mm. And, uh, you know, Jesus said that would be one of the roles of the spirit of God, yeah, to, convict, yeah. to convict, to yeah. convict. Uh, and all of this leads me to say, I just realise how important for us it is then to be faithful to God. That's great. To be faithful to God. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Murray, uh, I just want to take a few moments to say thank you to the church. Uh, so many friends, thank you so much for your support and encouragement over these last 20 years. Thank you to the leaders of our church. Uh, you have been fantastic. I'm grateful to God for you. I want to say a special thanks uh, to the teams that I've worked with because it's not been one team, the present team has been teams through the 20 uh, plus years. And uh, finally, I want to say thank you to my wife, Kerry, who has been just a wonderful support, to my kids uh, who have uh, been uh, so faithful to us as parents, our, uh, Kerry and me as their parents, 
and uh, we just we're just so privileged to have had uh, four great kids. So let me just say thank you again to God uh, for this special time in my life. Oh, Neil, that, I mean, I just so appreciate all that you've just shared, and and uh, you know you have a gift. Uh, and one of those gifts is, is to articulate and is to, is to bring about the Word of God and to help us to understand the Word of God. And you've done that so well. Um, outside of, though, what you say, I've just been reflecting on, on the words of St. Francis um, Assisi. And he says, preach the gospel always or at all times. And then he says, when necessary, use words. Mm-hmm. And if I think about what I see in you, that's what I see in you, that you preach the gospel with your lifestyle. You're not perfect, I no, get that. No. But you preach the gospel with your lifestyle. And um, one of the things that I have been so excited about is even in these la- this last week or so of your ministry here at Hume Ridge, you are on the phone to me this week letting me know of a- another lady who you led through Christianity Explained, who you led to Jesus. Now, somebody who's ma- given their heart to Jesus in Neil's last week of ministry on staff here. And, and later on today, Neil is going to be baptising some people. So three days, like his last Sunday on staff here at Hume Ridge, he's going to be baptising people. That's a testament, Neil, to who you are and what you've brought. And, and I guess, Neil, I, I stand here on behalf of every pastor and every staff member and every volunteer and every friend and every person over all of those years of ministry who've had the privilege of ministering alongside you and with you and Kerry. I guess on behalf of all of them, we want to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love for God. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to God and to his bride, the church. We want to bless you in in that your next season of life would be a season of healing and a season of wholeness and a season of fun. We want you to know how much we appreciate who you are as much as what you've done. Um, We want you to uh, understand how much we appreciate the difference you've made in so many lives of so many people and the way that you've advanced the kingdom of God and your heart's always been to advance the kingdom. And we just really appreciate you, Neil. Um, I would love to read a scripture over you, if that's okay, if you'd sort of allow me to. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. You, you yep. would know this well. But I, I just felt like this was something that um, I'd love to do as you kind of move into the next season of your life because I feel like um, the psalmist expresses you. So, church, if you would just um, maybe just listen to these words, maybe, maybe bow your heads. I'm going to read this over Neil and then I'm going to pray for him. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. And in verse six, the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. Let's just pray. Loving God, I want to thank you for this mighty man of God. I thank you, Lord, for his heart for you and his heart for the bride and his heart to see the kingdom of God advanced. I thank you for his many years of ministry here at Hume Ridge and all of the other places and spaces that he's been used by you for your glory. I pray you would bless him and Kerry. I pray this next season of their life, Lord God, as they move into retirement is one that is prosperous for them in every way. Mm. Lord, I pray your healing over his body right now, Lord God, as we all agree together that whatever is causing this discomfort for him would be gone in Jesus' name. We claim that in the name of Jesus. But Lord, more than anything, we thank you that he is a son of the king and someone who's been faithful to the call in his life. And we ask your blessing on him and his beautiful wife in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 Thanks, mate. Thank you.